Welcome to, uh, to Prayer, Prayer Summit, Summit. and uh, good, good to see a number of you who've come, uh, as, as many as we can, can are allowed to fit in this room uh, to come on site to our, uh, our Prayer Summit, Summit. and we, we also welcome those who are viewing online tonight. tonight. So, so this, this is something new, this is the first time that, uh, that since I've been here that we've held a service like a live stream, you know, so we're going to be doing this more often. And, you know, in the not too distant future, we'll be live streaming our Sunday services as well, and so on, as well as meeting on site. But uh, tonight we're live streaming. So, so let's uh, for for everyone, uh, for the sake of everyone who's watching online, everyone who's here in the heritage room on the count of three, give a big hallelujah. Can you do that? All right. So one, two, three, hallelujah! All right, all right. Hopefully that those of you who are watching online, you were able to hear that. And you, you feel, feel a part of us, uh, part of us here tonight. tonight. This, this is also the first time in six months that uh, I've uh, held a service in front of a live audience. So, so I might be a little rusty tonight, all right? But uh, it feels good. It feels really, really good. So, um, but so glad that you're here tonight. And uh, you know, we've come to you know lift up our voices in prayer. And of course, prayer is one of the most important things that we can engage in. Know that. That's, that's why you're here tonight. And those, those of you watching online, online that's, that's why you're you're, you're part, part of this prayer summit. summit. But, but uh, to, to prepare our hearts to uh, to pray tonight, we want to worship the Lord. So I'm going to invite you to stand. And uh, I see many of you are already doing that. We're asking those on site to put a mask on while we uh, while we sing for the consideration of others. You can, and uh, we appreciate that very much. But Lord, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to gather in this way. For so many of us. You know, we've been longing for this time where we could, we could meet together and worship together. And so, uh, Lord, we pray that tonight that you will be blessed by our worship and that, God, that you will hear and respond to our prayers tonight as we lift them up before you. Bless your people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. Sing it all together. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our
good to have a little bit of perspective sometimes about, you know, what's happening around the world, and, you know, sometimes we can just think that this whole COVID thing, pandemic, just affects us in our way here, but it affects people all around the world, right, in many different ways. And so uh, this is what uh, Don is writing. Prasad and I pray that you're all well. Uh, we are so grateful to everyone for your love and support. We're happy to say that we're healthy and continue to minister here in India. On July 15, Chennai went into another strict lockdown. We could travel no more than two kilometers from home. That lockdown was lifted earlier this month, and some things have returned to normal again. Looks like COVID-19 has peaked in India, and the number of infections have started to go down, which is good news. Our churches are, remain all closed, or all remain closed as well, as our after-school program and sewing classes are some of the things they do. The government made it mandatory that on Sunday, all of India would go into a complete lockdown. This, of course, means that no church would be allowed to open their doors. And then she goes on, she says, you know, in so many ways, we're living in a whole new world that has changed almost overnight. Amen. <laughs> right? When we first, uh, when we got our first message from a friend asking about COVID in India, we had no idea what she was talking about. In March, there were about 150 cases when we went into lockdown. The thought was COVID would pass by. Boy, were we wrong. But in, listen to this, but in all this, God has a plan. Amen? God has a plan. 
God has stretched us, opened doors to ministry, put us in favor with politicians, brought people to us, and covered us with his protection. And I love the way she ends up. She says, we are living in extraordinary times, serving an extraordinary God. We continue to be amazed at his faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's good. Amen. I just, I just feel, feel like, like it's good, good to share some of these stories from time to time because it puts it in perspective, doesn't it, you know? And, and we, we need to remember our global workers in prayer as well. Uh, I just wanted to share a scripture with you tonight. Just as, you know, we prepare our hearts to pray together. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. This is the first eight verses. This is wonderful scripture that, that encourages us to pray and to be people of prayer. So Paul the Apostle is writing, and he says, uh, I urge you then... First of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed, Paul's talking about himself, I was appointed as a herald and apostle. I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying, he says. And a true and faithful teacher, that is what I am to the Gentiles. But then he says this. Therefore, because of all this, I want the man everywhere to pray. And maybe some of the women too. I want the man and women everywhere to pray. And then he says, lifting holy hands without anger or dispute. As I read that uh, this week, I thought, you know, a couple of things, a few things that come up. First of all, the scripture talks talks about who we're to pray for, right? We're we're to pray, it says, for all people, right? All people. Not just people we agree with. (laughs) He says, especially our leaders, people who are in authority, whether we agree with them or not, we're to pray for them, all people. And then he talks about who we're to pray to, right? We, we pray to Jesus, our great mediator, the one who made it all possible because of his, his death on the cross, his resurrection from the grave. He opened up the way so that we can even pray, so that we can even pray to God and we can commune with him. And then he talks about how we should pray. You know, we should pray with humility. Yes, come boldly into the throne room of grace, but... Pray with humility, laying aside our differences, lifting up holy hands without anger or dispute. And so this is some good things to keep in mind tonight. That's a good scripture to keep in mind as we're going to the Lord in prayer. So tonight we have several areas that um, that we want to be praying about and praying for tonight. Uh, the first area is we'd really like to, to band together in prayer to really cover our whole reopening plan. All right, so... You know, as as many of you know, you'll all know, I mean, this is one of the steps in the pathway toward reopening. And on September 13th, we're looking forward to reopening church again. Praise the Lord. We're looking forward to that. We've been missing that. And of course, you know, we just, we've just heard over and over from people, from people are longing to be together. They're longing to worship together. They're they're longing to sit under God's teaching together. And of course, you know, we've been doing that online, but, you know, it's not quite the same, right? Of course, there's going to be some limitations. We're experiencing that tonight, right? We can only have, you know, 50 people in a room at, at one time. And, you know, we're asking people to wear masks while they're singing. And we're not going to have any children's ministry, at least not at first, you know, until we're able. And people have to sign up just like you did tonight. But it's, how many know it's a little bit different, right? It's a little bit different, but it's going to be good. Praise the Lord going to be good to be together. And so we put a lot of work into this and a lot of effort. We've been working hard over the summer. It takes a lot of work to follow the government regulations so that people can feel safe when they come. So, But I just pointed that out to say this. We need your prayer. We really need your prayer. It's a huge endeavor and we want to we want to make sure we're doing it correctly. So here's some prayer points for us to pray uh, about tonight. Um, just pray for our ongoing planning. One of the things we we say to our staff team is this this situation is very fluid. Uh, you know, we can plan and stuff, and sometimes things change. Sometimes they change quickly and we have to adjust. So pray for our ongoing planning. As we open up, let's pray for unity in the church. 
That's, That's a, a good, good thing, thing to pray, pray for all the time, but especially at this time. time. Because, because look at, let's, let's just throw it out there. We have different, different opinions on a lot of these issues. We do. And, and that's okay. okay. You, you know, we have different opinions about whether masks are working or not, whether we should have to do this, and, you know, vaccines and all these kinds of things. And, and, and we respect one another. And we treat one another with respect. And we respect one another's opinion. But at the same time, as leaders of the church, we have to make decisions for the whole church. <laughs> right? And so we're trying to do our best. And we really need your prayers and your support in that. And so we say we respect each other's opinions, but we want to make sure we're going to be unified. As we, As we show, show love for one another, another you know, know what? what? That's, that's going to be a witness to our community. That's, that's going to be a witness to the outside world. And that's, that's another thing we want to pray about tonight. tonight. That, that as we reopen, that all the things we're planning, that this will be a strong witness to our community. So First Peter 4.12 has been, has been like a scripture that I've been pondering over and over where it says, you know, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, that they, that they would see your good, good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits us. That, that should be the way we live. That should be the way we respond. That the, the, the world's not always going to agree with us. Of course not. But, but they, they, they would see the way that we conduct ourselves and that they would glorify God. They say that's a good thing. And so we want this to be a witness to our community. And then, of course, we want to pray that you know people would be safe. Let's pray for protection for everyone who comes through these doors. That they would be protected from this coronavirus. And and, and that, that, uh, that, that no harm would come, come to anyone. So, so we're going we're gonna to take, take some time. And we're going to invite you to pray in groups where you're at. at. Okay, so, so, you know, you're, you're, you're in your, your bubble. Pastor, Pastor Paul is his own bubble over there. there. This is a very <laughs> small bubble. But, but you're, I can see you're already, you know, there's uh, uh, groups of moms, moms over here. And you're, you're connecting already. You're in a bubble with your kids, other people. I see you've already formed yourself that way. That's great. So, so we, we want to take, take some time, time maybe, maybe about four or five minutes. minutes. We're going to give you about four or five minutes right in your group just to take these prayer points to the Lord. If there are other things the Lord lays on your heart in this area, pray about that. And then after that time, Pastor John will come, come lead us in, a, in like a concluding prayer for this section, and then we'll move on to the next. And if you're watching online at home, if you're by yourself, feel free just to enter in and pray. If you're with somebody else, just join with them in prayer, and let's lift up these requests to the Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead.
Amen. 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 Can I tell you, I just really appreciate the attitude and the, the way that we all came in today and for the, the compliance and the willingness to be together and pay whatever price we need to if we need to wear a mask. By the way, I, I, I spent many years as a youth pastor and we had great youth masked youth games. So I feel like I'm in a bit of an older youth group tonight. And we would come, we would come with masks on, and then we would, in the service, we would youth service, we try to figure out who everybody was. It was a great masquerade youth group. It might be a great idea, guys. So uh, you just remind me of many, <laughs> many years ago. I just appreciate you coming and uh, just being a part of this and realizing that uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. This is a great opportunity to stretch our faith. It's a great opportunity to just kind of see what we're made of. And this isn't persecution. The church has gone through persecution since day one. This is not that. This may not be comfortable, but we shouldn't be surprised at some fiery trials that come as though it's some strange thing. And uh, so I just appreciate you being here. And thank you, thank you. It was just great to see people coming in. I, see, I, I can tell when you're smiling with your mask on because your eyes kind of squint. It was awesome. Let's just uh, go to the Lord. Lord, as we plan, as we do the very, very best we can to cooperate with the BC Health Authority, with Dr. Bonnie Henry, with all the people we need to. Help us, O oh Lord, to be Christ-like in everything we do. Lord, I pray that we would have a joy in our heart when things are not normal as far as we're concerned. That we, O oh Lord, would realize this is an opportunity to show and to stretch and to prove our faith. And when people fight, that we would pray and that we would love. I thank you, Lord. I pray, oh God, for unity in, in, in evangel. Lord, here we are. We're together and we may not have the same opinions on many things. And that would go for the entire congregation. But Lord, help us to have unity of the spirit. That we would realize our bigger goal, our bigger vis vision and mission and what we're here for. And so, Lord, that we would be able to see through all the things that could divide us and tear us apart, and we would see a far, far bigger goal in mind, and that is to glorify you and to see that people would uh, have a clear, clear picture of what we're here for, the love of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. May we have a strong witness in the community of Kelowna. Lord, I pray, even as we're very careful that we would realize that we don't want a negative thing said in the press or anything else. We want people to know that we are here as part of this community. We're not exempt. Lord, we are here to support our community, to support the people that have been elected, and also to be a valid and valued part. And people would trust us as we put our trust in you. Help us, O oh Lord whether we're younger or older, to be safe. Lord, that we would do what we need to do, not only to keep ourselves safe, but to keep others safe. That we would, oh Lord, look for the good of the, of the whole. That we would be selfless as you have asked us to be. So I thank you, Lord. And I just pray, oh God, that you, by your Holy Spirit, would just take this and may we see it in a revelation form as an opportunity to show our faith, to stretch us, and to give you glory. And may people come because they see the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We thank you for these things, Lord. Thank you for the opportunities. Thank you for people who have come tonight. And I just pray, O oh Lord, as we plan for 
other events, especially our Sunday events, Lord, that you would just bring peace and harmony and strength. Be with us as a staff, with as a congregation. We haven't met for so long on a Sunday. So Lord, I just give you all that. Holy Spirit, anoint us as believers and the things we do here in the powerful and the strong and the redeeming name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks, Pastor, Pastor Don. Really appreciate Pastor Don. We, there's so many, uh, you know, new rules and regulations and that kind of thing to, to follow. And so I could, I could see that early on. I needed to have someone from our staff that would be kind of liaison with government body and that kind of a thing. And so Pastor Don is just the right guy to do that. And so he's helped us a ton. Appreciate that. We want to move to our next uh, area of prayer. We want to pray specifically for families and, uh, you know, particularly for parents and uh, who, are, who are preparing to send their kids back to school. This is a huge thing right now. And, and not just for the parents, but for the teachers, right? I mean, man, there's a lot of things that, you know, for us in, in ministry, on, you know, in church, there's a lot of things we're having to learn or new things we're having to learn. Teachers the same way in terms of how to, you know, uh, teach in this, in this uh, environment. And so, you know, there's a lot of parents that are, as you know, you're hearing about it in the news. We have parents here tonight and, and that, that are just, you know, wrestling with those feelings, you know, and their friends are wrestling. They're having those conversations. Do we send our kids back to school? Do we keep them home? Lots of anxiety. And so let's, let's pray, you know, specifically pray for those who are struggling with anxiety. Let's, let's pray that God brings them peace. Let's pray for teachers, all right? Let's pray. This is like a fall like none other <laughs> for teachers. And let's pray for the safety of our children. Let's pray for the safety of our educators as, as they're preparing, you know, this uh, in just a, you know, a couple of weeks or so to go back to school. So let's, again, get in our groups the next three or four minutes or so, and let's take these things to the Lord in prayer, all right? And then after that, Pastor Josh will come and lead us in a prayer.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift up our families to you today. Jesus, we lift up our children to you today. Father, I can think of so many families that we're in so uh, such close contact with, and, and this is such a big next step. I feel like parents are first through the wall in, in like this whole going back to normal life thing, and so many people are dealing uh, with this in different ways, and there's a lot of stress, and there's anxiety, and Father, I know that we can cast our anxieties on you because you care for us. So, uh, God, I just, I pray for these families right now that we'd be able to cast our anxiety on you. And Holy Spirit, for everyone in this room that uh, is in this situation, for everyone that's watching right now that's in this situation, Holy Spirit, I pray for your peace to be upon them. I pray for your peace to be upon them, God. In all areas of life, we don't know what's around the corner, but you know what's around the corner. And we can always trust you. We know that you are our strong foundation. We can trust in you, God. And I know that there are families that in this time have felt disconnected. Because even in this room, there's 50 of us right now, but a family of three, four, five people, sometimes it's hard for us to be involved in all these things. And God, I just... This, this feeling of disconnected and just anxiety that people have. I want to pray against that, Lord, right now in your name, Jesus. We pray against uh, the enemy that would want to try and disconnect us. Father, we pray for unity of our people. Holy Spirit, you're not just contained to this room right now. You're, you're over uh, with everyone watching on live stream. You're with all the people that aren't with us here tonight, too. And God, you are so much bigger uh, than this situation. And so, God, we just pray for unity. And we pray against that disconnected feeling in the name of Jesus over our families and our children, Lord. And so, Lord, as we head back into the fall, we lift up our teachers to you. The people that are educating our kids. I think of all the teachers and administrative staff and everyone that's uh, working in this very building that's attached to us at the Christian school, God, I just pray for them to be filled with your presence, to be filled with your power, Jesus, to be uh, able to do their job well and that you would fill them with wisdom in this time and that, God, you would protect them. We pray for not just KCS uh, that's here or their other campus. We pray for the whole school district in the city of Columbus. And we pray for all these people that are heading back. God, I pray for your protection. We ask, Lord, for the protection to be upon our people. We pray against, uh, against the coronavirus. We do. We pray for your healing. We pray uh, against sickness in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we trust in you. And so, Lord, for our families for our students, for our teachers. Oh God, we just pray for your protection over us and your peace over us. And I pray now more than ever for our schools, God, that there would be a move of the Holy Spirit within our schools, from elementary and middle school and high school, that these kids that are going back to school that are filled with your Holy Spirit, God, would you be doing a work in them? Would you be doing a work through them in their schools, God? pray for revival to break out in our schools with our young people, for prayer groups, uh, for kids that are just living normal life in, in our city. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to not only protect them, but to use them in tremendous ways. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, hear the prayers of your people as we lift this up to you, God. We trust you and we love you. We give you all the praise tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, so much. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Josh. Appreciate Pastor Josh and Nicole and Pastor John as they work with our kids, our preteens, our, our youth. I mean, you think it's tough for you think it's tough for, you know, adults to physically distance. 
I think about preteens and youth and children, you know, and that. And yet all summer, they've been, you know, running programs outside. In fact, last night, they had like 30 preteens here outside. I saw a picture, physically distant, you know, <laughs> games and doing all this kind of stuff outside. Having an awesome time, you know. And John, they've been the same with youth all through the summer, and they've been running kids' camps and stuff. So bless you guys. Bless you guys. Amen. We want to we wanna pray for people who are struggling these days. You know, I'm thinking in particular, you know, we would all know people who, I mean, this, this, this pandemic has really squeezed people and stretched people in many different areas. And so it's, it's uh, brought pressure on marriages. There are marriages that are struggling. You know, we're thinking of people, I mean, those of us in this room who know Jesus, I mean, you know, we can, we can have doubts and fears and that kind of thing, but we have Jesus. But what about people who don't have Jesus? You know, where you're thinking about our unsaved loved ones, you know, they're on our hearts to be praying for, particularly during this time, that they come to Jesus. And people who are facing doubts and fears and people who are struggling with loneliness, right? There's still many people. You know, we're hearing more and more people in nursing homes. You know, many people, they're so depressed, you know, because, again, it's opened up a little bit, but still not very much, you know, and it's very, very difficult for people. And then people are facing financial struggles. Thinking about people who've been on CERB or, you know, unemployment, and now are going to come off that, right? It's going to be very difficult for many of these people. So can we take some time just in our group? Let's take another three or four minutes and just go into our groups. Let's just pray about these things. And then Pastor Paul will come and, uh, and pray a closing prayer, all right? Allow me to lead 
lead you in prayer. As I was sitting a moment ago, I was thinking of the amazing fact that as we gather in this room, we are joining something so profound and powerful, prayers of God's people. We're not the first people to pray. What we're doing tonight has been done over the millennia. People gathered, coming to God. Moses, coming to God. Abraham, Paul, Peter, Polycarp, Tyndale, Moody, Billy Graham, my dad. We join the sweep of history. So these days are strange to us, but they're not strange to him. He has seen it all. Great is thy faithfulness, O God our Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to you, God. The God of ages past the God of today, the God of tomorrow, the God who has everything in the very center of his hand. Oh, hallelujah. We come as your people tonight. We come as your people have come for many, many hundreds of years, and we will find you to be faithful, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we're praying for people who are feeling the weight of these strange days. The, the pressures that have come upon them that have perhaps caused cracks and fissures that were already there to, to widen. And Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your healing power would not only be there for physical difficulties and all of those things that we often pray for, but Lord, we also pray for relationships today. We do pray for marriages. We pray, Lord, that in the midst of all that is going on, that you would heal and restore, that you would recreate love that seems to be lost, Oh, God, you are able to do that. We thank you in our own lives. We've experienced that healing touch in our own relationships. And, and Lord, we pray that not simply for ourselves, but for those that we love dearly, those who are part of our congregation, those who are family to us. And we pray, Lord, that marriages would be rekindled and strengthened we thank you that you've done that in many marriages. With time that families have had to be together, we thank you that that has been a good thing. And, and for others, Lord, I pray that they would just look to you. Oh, God, we pray for our kids, those of us who have children. I think of those who have young children today, Lord. And I pray that as we prayed a moment ago for, for kids going back to school, that that they wouldn't be filled with fear. Lord, we, we understand concern and we understand caution, but we don't want fear in their lives. We want them to live whole lives, Lord, free to mingle together and have fun together and, and be safe, but, but enjoy life and be educated and all of those things that they need. Oh, we pray that for them. As someone has prayed already, may the joy of the Lord be their strength. Lord, we pray for those who are facing financial difficulties. You are still our source. 
We thank you that CERB is not our source and UI or whatever it's called is not our source, but you're our source and may you make a way in every difficult circumstance. And so, Lord, we're praying for all of these different needs. And I'm reminding myself, oh, Lord, people facing doubts, fears. We thank you, Lord, as we learned again on Sunday morning that doubts are not the end of the world. We pray that no one would be filled with unbelief, but through all of this, in the midst of their doubts, their faith would grow. And so we bless you today, Lord. We thank you that you are at work in all of these situations. And we can trust you because you are faithful. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you, Pastor Paul. Appreciate you so much. He, uh, he was our guinea pig in starting these gatherings uh, you know, with the legacy builders. I'm so proud of our seniors. You know, this, for many of them, this has not been an easy time for them. And, and uh, just to see the way that they were had hungered long to come back together again in the last few weeks. And so bless you, Pastor Paul, as you've been ministering, you know, to our seniors and others. One more thing we just want to pray for tonight before we sing a closing song. We want to pray for Canada. We need to pray for Canada. I mean, no, we need to pray for Canada. <laughs> We've said it so often, you know, that, um, that uh, uh, I don't know how many times I've said it, you know, these are, if ever there was a time we needed to pray for candidates now, but I feel like I'm saying that again, you know, and we just do need to. And I think the first thing we need to pray for, as always, for our country is a national renewal, you know, and, and this could be the thing that could bring that about, right? I mean, there are many, many people that are, that are, they're fearful, they're confused, they're questioning, they're looking for answers. And we know that Jesus is the answer. But we need that to happen in a corporate way and we need to repent and we need to come before the Lord and with humility and say, oh God, don't forget about Canada. Don't. God, continue to work in Canada. Raise Canada up as a, as a light, Lord, to the nations. So we pray for our leaders. I, I'm reminded oftentimes that you know, I think about all the new things that I'm learning through this, new ways of doing things, and have never gone this way before, never experienced this. But leaders of all shapes and stripes, it's the same. The leaders in Canada, this is all new for them too. And so let's pray for them. They really need our wis uh, their God's wisdom. And I'm thinking about even, you know, reconciliation that needs to happen between different groups of people, you know, different races, different, different um, socioeconomic groups and so on. You know what? Uh, we prayed for unity before, and that's where God commands his blessing, where there's unity, right? And so we need to pray as people are coming together. So let's stand, everybody, and can we just, can we just take just a couple of minutes, you know, just to call out to God on behalf of Canada? Can we do that? Let's just begin to, you know, like a corporate un prayer of unison together. Let's just lift our voices. Can we do that? And let's just start to call on God for, for Canada. Let's just all together. God, we pray for our country of Canada. Oh, Lord.
Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. I'm going to invite our worship team to come on back and lead us in a song, this song that we sing sometimes, the song Waymaker. <laughs> That's what we need, God. We need you to be the waymaker for us in our nation, in our families, in our own lives, Lord, in our church. We need you to be the one who makes the way, who clears the way, God, we pray. Lord, where, as we used to sing, makes a way where there seems like there could be no other way, God. You're the God who does that. You're the God who brings it about. You're the God who heals. You're the God who works miracles, oh Lord. And so, Lord, that's what we're asking of you tonight. As we sing this song, make a way in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing it out. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are we make a we make a miracle work. Promise keep. Never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Oh yes, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you. Lift your praise, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. It's been good to be here tonight and to lift up our prayers and our praise to the Lord. And thanks for joining us here tonight. Thanks for joining us online. We pray this has been a blessing to you as well. We encourage you to fellowship with each other. Just do it outside, all right? It just works better for everybody. It's a beautiful evening. Let's go outside and encourage one another. God bless you, everybody.